I'm all for guys going out and working. But then you get guys that, and it's promoters too. Promoters don't want to use, you know, for a promoter to not pay a guy is one thing, but when a wrestler accepts the fact that he's working for free is completely bullshit. Like, I wish the boys took care of themselves the way the girls do. Like, girls won't settle for cheat. Right. They really don't. And they take care of each other, and that's fantastic. And then you get promotions that'll use some some fucking piece of shit who don't know nothing about wrestling. You know, they'll put him in a ring because they just want to be nice. Or because he's free. They'll put and it just blows my mind when you get you know, there's so many guys out there that could do this for a living if you didn't have such shitty ass people. You know, letting guys not paying them and working for free. That's mm-hmm. absolutely inexcusable. Should never ever work for free. Mm-hmm. Because it's called pro wrestling. You want to work for free, you know, you probably should go try to trial for the Olympics or something. Mm-hmm. You know, two guys, let's just say, let me ask you this. How many wrestling fans are up there in Pittsburgh? How many wrestling fans? I'd say a good bit. They were sold out for Royal Rumble feds. here. We got uh, uh, wrestling companies. Oh, feds, I'm sorry. Um, um, I would say four, including VOW, but they're not really regular. So you got so you got VOW. Yep, PWX, RWA, PWX, IWC. Those companies, all four, and I'm not trying to say anything different. You should have they. There should be nobody on each roster that works for anybody else. Mm-hmm. Should not. You know, because. What happens if, let's just say, the Beatles were all in their prime and they played in the same city every night of the every night, or, or like say every Saturday night, the Beatles were playing at this town? Mm-hmm. Would would they would you believe that they would lose their uh, a little bit of their muster, right. a little bit of, of the attraction? Yeah, mm-hmm. because they're like, oh shit, we miss to see them next week. Two, when all these different promotions are using the same guys, it's just absolutely killing stuff. Because I don't know what the draw is up there anymore. I ain't worked at Pittsburgh in a while. You know, I don't know what place. What, what is a typical draw? Um, I would say typically like, you know, one, you know, around 150 to 200 that shows that I work. All right. Malo, Ohio for I like some for, of the bigger I work, shows. I work for War Wrestling in Lima, Ohio. Mm-hmm. We draw 600 people. Mm-hmm. A show. We don't use it. If we had another Fed, we have another Fed trying to run us to run, and we refuse to use any of their guys. We won't use it because that would that would make that would water down the product. Yeah. I just don't. You know, like I, was, I remember Huntington, West Virginia, one time I had four wrestling feds that ran weekly. Mm. Four, four. How the fuck are you supposed to make any money if everybody's running the same night? Yeah. <laughs> or it, you know, and you know there, and you know there was guys bouncing because they were all different times, like curtain jerking in main event. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, I know so, that 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 happens a lot out here because I know well PWX they're running bi-weekly now, um, and even you know I work for IWC and RWA doing video, and I've counted at least four times where I'm overlapping this year, you know, mm-hmm. and they're not too far away. We're talking, you know, you're not uh, familiar with geography, uh, probably around here, but um, it's McKeesport, Elizabeth, and. Um, uh, West Newton, of course, with RWA. Uh, and those are all a stone's throw from each other. They're all south of Pittsburgh. It's not like, you know, what, it was different when we had Far North Wrestling when they were like, you know, say up in Butler, right? At least like, hey, everybody north of the city can go to this. Everybody in the south city can go down here. VOW is right. way out in the middle of nowhere, like like an, at least an hour's drive away from the city, right? Um, and, yeah, and that, some, you know. Sometimes yeah. we'll have all three groups, I think, are on the same night sometimes. There's a little lack of planning if that stuff's happening. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, I would tell this to the promoter's face, but I really would. 
I, you know, if someone, if they hear this and they get all butt hurt, you know what I mean? I can tell it to the face. And I'm not doing it to be a dickhead. You know, it just, if, if you really sit down and think about it, you know, I mean, guys getting this funk where they, you know, I actually make, I make really good money wrestling. I actually do a pretty good job mm-hmm. because I spread myself out. I'm, you know, I'm not one for leave wrestling in hell. We call it the 40 milers. No one that wants to wrestle 40 miles away from their house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That happens a lot in Dayton, Ohio. Uh, mm-hmm. that same shit happens in Dayton. It's the only area in Ohio. And Cleveland kind of gets that way, but no one really gives a shit. You know, but you get to a city like Lima, you know, like OCW, High Championship Wrestling, go to Jeff Cannon, all these places drawing huge because they don't use anybody else that runs somewhat close. Mm-hmm. They all have unique rosters that stand out. So that's a, that's. That's a big thing that just frustrates me. I think there's too many feds, for one, in, in the United States that ain't regulated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, too, you know, I think, I think we should have a national wrestling license to be able to be a professional wrestler in the United States because it's way too damn easy to be a professional wrestler these days. Yeah. Right. There's too many assholes out there that can buy it. Can, can go to high spots and buy boots. And I'm not going to tell high spots how to make money because that is what it is. I don't blame them. you got to make money. you got to eat. But it, it's too easy for guys to buy boots. So the way we get it is we license everybody. And let's just say we have a regional you know, guy, and, we pay, and the state pays him to license people. So we cut down professional wrestlers, you know, and there's a lot more money to go around, for one. Then you have to force, you know, license, like, wrestling companies. Mm-hmm. You know, like, let's say, a, like, two-hour drive from each other. You can't run a Fed two hours away from another place. So just, you know, whatever. You can work later. That way, it would mean more because... It wouldn't be so watered down. You wouldn't, you know, you would have less places to work. There would be more opportunity possibly to go around. Because I see these wrestling feds. Like, I've been on some shows where I show up and I go, what the fuck is this? Mm -hmm. And you look around, you know, and you usually know when people don't come up and shake your hand. Mm-hmm. When you first get to the place, and that's that's a big thing. It's just a matter of shows respect. When you show up and you got people that you have to go tell them to shake your hand, and the promoter don't care, you know that's a shitty place. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, but those are a few things that really piss me off about wrestling. All right. Yeah, I think I think. All right, that was a long rant. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> it's that's all fine. good. We love it. Um, I think that's I think that's the thing we wanted to like when we started this show. That so. It-